and we're live. Welcome back, guys, uh, to another episode of the Solvable Mysteries podcast. My name is Yuras. I'm joined by Glenn Highcove. Man, how are you feeling? Well, I mean, it's kind of a, a weird, scary news month. I won't get into that too much about what's going on right now to keep this a little bit evergreen. But um, we have sort of a, an interesting case. And I, I guess one thing that I just thought of when we were um, kind of teeing up this case tonight, um, when you look at some of the scenery and stuff in this 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 case, because it's up sort of in the, the wilderness areas of the United States, I, I couldn't help but like think how, how lucky I was to live here. Because I was like, wow, look at this this kind of amazing scenery that you can just drive to, you know, not, not even that, it's not even that hard really to drive there. If you put your mind to it here in the U S and, you know, it's like, it's like, you don't even have to go to another country for that. You can go from like beaches to like this, you know, in just a couple of days of driving. Uh, good point. T today's case definitely is a more rural American case, uh, definitely not a downtown Los Angeles case from last week. Um, so without any further ado, uh, today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Rebecca Barsati. Now, I want to quickly uh, jump to the case introduction and then let's just analyze what we think probably happened in Rebecca's case. I want to say that this case mainly revolves around two theories. Okay, so at the end of this podcast, let's definitely lean towards one or the other uh, theory because this is very interesting. This this case is very deep. So uh, here comes the introduction of this case. Rebecca Mersati is an American woman who disappeared on July 20th while hiking with her dog Cerberus near the Clark Fork River in the state of Montana. At the time of her disappearance, Rebecca was 33. She is 5 foot 5 in height and weighs around 135 pounds. She has sandy blonde hair and blue eyes. She also has a tattoo of a snowdrift on her right foot and a tattoo of a hummingbird and flowers on her left rib cage. Rebecca was born on December 28, 1987. She grew up in Virginia with her parents, Angela and Jerry Mastrovito, and her brother Antonio. Rebecca had moved away from Virginia to live in Montana and has been living there since 2007. At the time of her disappearance, she had recently left her husband David Barsari after he had assaulted her and had to spend three days in jail. Following the assault, Rebecca moved away from Mineral County, Montana and was now living in Missoula, Montana, which is a medium-sized city around 60 miles away from Mineral County. To my understanding, Rebecca and David had never officially divorced. They had gotten married in 2015 and they've been married for six years. At the time of her disappearance, Rebecca was working as a server at a high-end wine bar called Plunk in downtown Missoula. Rebecca also had a dog named Cerberus that she loved very much. She would spend a lot of time training Cerberus, as well as taking him on various hiking trips. On the day that Rebecca disappeared, which was July 20th, her vehicle was found at the I-90 truck stop, otherwise known as the Alberton Rest Area. Some of her personal belongings were found not very far away from the car, on the riverbank along the Clark Fork River on the east side of Alberton Rock, which is a popular rock climbing destination. The Alberton rest area where Rebecca's car was found is next to a popular rock climbing location and there would usually be people hanging around that area. Rebecca's parents believe that someone must have seen or heard Rebecca that day. Among Rebecca's personal belongings, her phone was also located. After looking at the phone, law enforcement managed to uncover a video that showed Rebecca training her dog Cerberus in the same area. The video must have been taken by 
Rebecca herself, shortly before she disappeared. After Rebecca's car and her personal belongings were discovered, a massive search of the area began. However, neither Rebecca nor her dog Cerberus were anywhere to be seen. According to Sheriff Mike Toth, Rebecca was last seen on July 20th at the town pump gas station in Superior around 2.15 p.m., which was 25 miles away from where her car was found. Rebecca was meeting her husband's David's caretaker in this gas station in order to pick up some of her personal belongings that were left at their house. The caretaker was the last known person to speak with Rebecca. Law enforcement described the area where Rebecca went missing as, quote, chaotic stretch of river with deep areas and some 90 degree bends where the currents will pull you under, end quote. Missoula County Sheriff's Captain Bill Bird stated that around 2,000 volunteer hours from surrounding counties were utilized when looking for Rebecca. Captain Bill Bird also added that about 30% of Missoula's search and rescue's fuel budget for this fiscal year has been used solely on the search for Rebecca Barsari. Six days after her disappearance on July 26th, Sheriff Mike Toth announced on social media that Rebecca's dog Cerberus had been found dead half in and half out of the water in the Clark Fork River about 10 miles downstream from where authorities believe Rebecca and her dog went into the water approximately half a mile southeast of Tarkio. All of these locations will make a lot more sense when we jump to the map shortly. Since Cerberus' body was already deteriorating, the exact cause of death was never determined. Later examinations of the dog's body were not conducted as Cerberus was cremated two weeks after his body was discovered. Law enforcement seems to lean towards the theory that Rebecca must have drowned in the Clark Fork River, potentially after Cerberus started drowning and Rebecca jumped in the water to try and save her beloved dog. Rebecca's parents, Angela and Jerry, told the media that they are grateful for the overwhelming help from law enforcement and the community. However, they fear that all resources went into searching the Clark Fork River, the parents believe their daughter might be somewhere on land. Rebecca's mother Angela last spoke to her daughter at the end of July when she was sending off a care package of fuzzy socks, Christmas ornaments, and dog toys for Cerberus. Angela told the media that this Christmas package arrived at the post office in Missoula on July 20th, which was the same day Rebecca went missing. Angela found out about her daughter's disappearance from Rebecca's estranged husband David Barsari, who was contacted by law enforcement regarding his wife's disappearance. David and Angela I'm sorry, David sent Angela a text message around 10:15 p.m. in the evening stating that the police had come to his home searching for Rebecca. David said he was irritated and felt as if he was being harassed by law enforcement. Angela then sent a text message to Rebecca. After not getting a message back, Angela contacted Rebecca's brother Antonio, who also couldn't reach his sister. Rebecca's parents traveled from their home in Virginia to Missoula as soon as they found out their daughter was missing. When Rebecca's parents arrived in Missoula a few days later, they got straight to work hanging flyers, making phone calls, talking with the locals, and organizing searches. Angela stated, quote, We know she was at the location where her stuff was found because there's video on her phone of the area, but we don't believe that she's in the water, end quote. Angela said that authorities believe Rebecca jumped 
in the river to save her dog, but some of the details do not add up to Rebecca's family. For example, the fact that Rebecca's belongings were neatly piled on the riverbank. Angela believes that her daughter wouldn't have paused to take things out of her pockets if her dog was drowning and she would have jumped into the water straight away. According to Rebecca's parents, her marriage with her husband David was very turbulent and there was a history of domestic violence against Rebecca. Rebecca even came back home to live with her parents in 2016, saying that she needed a break from the marriage. Rebecca's parents also stated that she had gotten kicked out of the house on multiple occasions and would have to go to the hotel. As proof, the parents even have hotel receipts. On multiple occasions, once in 2020 and again in 2021, Rebecca called her mom, informing that she is splitting up with David. Now, on March 9th, 2021, five months before Rebecca disappeared, she sent her mother a message saying that she had called 911. Now, Angela says there have been multiple 911 calls throughout the year, but the one made leading up to her disappearance actually resulted in personal family member assault charges against David, who had to spend three days in jail for this assault. David was not allowed to return to the house as long as Rebecca was there, and Rebecca moved out of Missoula on April 6th, moved out to Missoula on April 6th, I'm sorry. Angela says that more searches need to be performed on land and that the family needs more resources to keep searching. Rebecca's mother, Angela, believes that someone at the Alberton Rest Area must have seen Rebecca, or at least heard something, so she urges anyone with information to contact the family or the authorities. There are a couple of prominent theories in Rebecca's Barsati's disappearance. Now, the theory that law enforcement seems to be leaning towards in this case is that Rebecca, for one reason or another, must have gotten into the Clark Fork River and subsequently drowned. A popular scenario being proposed is that Cerberus, Rebecca's dog, started drowning and Rebecca probably jumped in to try and save him, but both of them drowned in the river. The river seems to be a fairly dangerous place, and the video found on Rebecca's phone indicates that she was training her dog alongside the riverbank. Cerberus was found 10 miles downstream, however, the cause of death has never been determined. Rebecca's parents believe it's unlikely that she would have taken the time to neatly pack her personal belongings alongside the riverbank and only then try to rescue her dog. Also, there is no proof that Rebecca even entered the water in the first place and her parents say that her body should have turned up by now or someone must have at least seen or heard Rebecca if she was drowning. Another theory revolves around Rebecca's estranged husband David Barsati, who the family suspect had something to do with her disappearance. David's and Rebecca's marriage was not ideal. Rebecca would end up calling 911 or would get kicked out of her home on multiple occasions. In fact, their marriage completely fell apart after David assaulted her five months prior to her disappearance. If David was able to assault his wife and then subsequently had to spend a few days in prison, some believe it's possible he could have tracked her down and potentially killed her. Law enforcement seemed to have not focused their attention on David as much as the family would like to. Law enforcement stated that David had an alibi. However, the details about this alibi have not been shared with Rebecca's family. At the time of this recording, Rebecca Bersati has been missing for over seven months. So that's the general introduction into this case. Um, you know, as always, man, your initial thoughts. Do you have anything that's like jumping out to you immediately? Yeah, you know, I was just going to ask you the same thing, because from my point of view, um, 
and I am a little biased because, you know, like you and I had, had done some more review ahead of the show and kind of synced up on some, um, some media, uh, from the case. I'm, I, I, I understand why the parents feel the way they do. I don't agree with their conclusions, um, but that's, that's me so far. And I think my mind might change over the course of the show. How do you feel? Um, you know, that's a good question. I don't really know how I feel about uh, the family stating that, uh, you know, there needs to be a focus on a land search. I think, you know, I think they have a good point here that the husband is definitely, or yeah, like the husband, because, you know, David and Rebecca, they never really officially divorced as, as far as I understood. Uh, they didn't really go down to it. They, they just were living separately. Um, I think he's definitely a problematic person. And I think that's seriously what we're here to, to discuss this week is like, do we think it's an accident or do we think there's foul play? And if there's foul play, I think if there is foul play, then I think her husband, the man who has been quite literally terrorizing her over like the last like five to six years, I think he would be the main suspect. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, that would seem that, well, yeah, I guess, I guess let me say he would be the main suspect, but then if that was the case, I would also throw in uh, potentially other other I guess um, people who may not even know her necessarily, and I guess I guess we'll get into shortly why um, the husband may or may not be a good um, a good uh, in theory a good uh, culprit uh, you know a good uh, suspect let's say of course one. of course of course uh, you know uh, I would like to jump on the visual assets for the audience members through a few, let's say, pictures most likely uh, at first. So this is Rebecca Bersati. She was 33 years of age at the time of her disappearance. Uh, this is Rebecca and her dog Cerberus. We can see that Cerberus was definitely not a small dog. Um, definitely seemed like a pretty strong, pretty big dog. And I think this picture, from this picture, it kind of even looks like Cerberus is almost even bigger than Rebecca herself. Now, um, yeah, I mean, this, this kind of a dog, you know, I, I, the one thing I want to uh, immediately point out, and I read this somewhere, and I'll want your take here uh, real quickly, dude. Um, some people believe that maybe uh, there there's a chance that if, if this was an accident, that maybe Rebecca was the one who started drowning, if you know what I mean. Like, um, what, do you, what do you think about that potential line of thinking? And we'll get into the theories. Uh, this is not us talking about the theories just yet. I just really quickly want to hear your take. Do you think it's likely that maybe Rebecca was the one who started drowning and then maybe um, Cerberus jumped in to try and save her? Would, would that make any sense to you? Um... Maybe I think it, so. Part of what I kind of wanted to comment on, um, I know you had a really good piece of media. I mean, I, I got the, the media on this thing, like the scenery is just amazing. You can see why a show like Yellowstone, um, you know, about approximately kind of the same part of the country is so popular right now in the US and maybe the rest of the world because the scenery, um, in that part of the world can be spectacular. It's still, um, I'll just preface this by saying I'm going to make some reference to like a trip I took um, when I was a kid to this part of the country. Um, and I was like, I don't know, nine, 10, uh, something like that. Maybe, maybe eight. Uh, it was, it was like my favorite vacation ever. Um, and it was, it was, you know, even all these years later, more than 30 years later, I still have a pretty strong memory of it, but um yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting when you look at, so there's, there's this one piece of media you have where it actually showed. Um, I think I'm showing it right now, right? Okay, yeah, with the dog, where, where the dog was actually going in the stream. Oh, I yeah. You showed me one. Yeah, you had the one where, because this, this is the thing, when I, when I watched it, it was so interesting to me because I looked at that and I was like, first of all, I was like, I don't really understand what she's trying to train the dog for because like usually when people train dogs in water, like a lot of times there's like, there's, um, well, there's people that hunt. So there's people that tra train dogs to retrieve like birds, like, you know, that they shoot 
um, that fall into the water, like geese and things like that, ducks. Um, so like, and then there's also people that actually like do contests for those kind of dogs because there's like a whole skill to like directing those dogs to where the where the the downed um, bird is. So like that's a whole like that's like like ESPN I think tele, has been televising that for decades. Those contests. Anyway, the only reason why I bring it up is I'm not really sure what she's accomplishing here. Like if she's trying to train for that, um, this dog. I mean, I could be wrong. It doesn't really look like a a super strong swimmer. Like I don't know if that breeded dog was really meant for this kind of stuff. Maybe it is. This is like a melanos or whatever it's called. I, I can't probably pronouncing it wrong. It's probably all these dog owners shouting at their their um, their YouTube or their podcast right now. Um, looks like those kind of dogs that they breed for like uh, police dogs and stuff. That's what it looks like to me. I really think since, you know, she was just a server at like a restaurant, I really think she's just like having fun. There, there's she's no... just messing around. She's just like, like taking it out. Yeah, you know. You know, there's no purpose for this if that's what okay. You're okay, so there was no, there was no goal. She was just getting, she was just trying to be a good dog owner, I guess, right? She was just trying to. I mean, which, by the way, if you were this dog, other than maybe just almost drowning right there, um, it's like a good day, right? Like I think this is probably one of the luckiest dog <laughs> that part of the country. But the only thing is, like, the, the, I think that maybe so she's not from the area originally, even though she has at this point spent some amount of some good amount of her life in that part of the country, I don't know that she was as knowledgeable of the rivers as those people that were quoted um, when you gave the timeline and the introduction to the case. Like, because yeah, you look at a river like this and it looks pretty calm, it looks pretty normal. That could definitely change um, depending on like, you know, the time of year, how fast the snow is melting. But um, I mean, this looks like a little creek. Uh, this almost quickly. doesn't even... Yeah. Uh, just background. This video, uh, remember guys when I said that there was a video found on Rebecca's phone that proved that Rebecca was actually training her dog next to the area where she disappeared from. This is not the video. This is a video not, that not I, the same one. No, yeah. no. This is a video that I found on her Facebook page, the dedicated Facebook page that was made in order to try and locate Rebecca. And the family posted this video. Now, this video was taken some time before Rebecca disappeared. So this is a whole separate video. Uh, I guess what it tells us is that doing this kind of stuff was a uh, not, not she wasn't training her dog for the first time in the water when she disappeared like we can tell that this was happening even before you know what i mean okay so that's i, I understand it sets context that makes sense i mean i will say that even in this kind of like like at first i was kind of brushing it off like oh it doesn't look that deep because like the dog is walking there but then like the dog goes from walking to like being above its head in water like i got really deep right there see where it just dropped off and all of a sudden it's like i don't know six or seven feet deep there maybe it looks like the water is moving also yeah the water's moving it's got some some velocity to it rivers are real deceptive i mean i'll, I'll tell you there's a creek near me that i've been in like up up to my knees and like it was actually semi-dangerous your feet get stuck in it and it, and it was actually the velocity was going farther so i don't underestimate any mm -hmm. river yeah i think it's so a to your original question yeah, man. I mean, I mean, both ways. I can see it happening both ways when I look at this, because that dog doesn't seem like a good swimmer. Um, you know, what I mean, even even for a dog, like it's a little bit. Mm, it's, it's all right. It's it's treading water pretty good there, but sometimes it seems like it's just running and not really swimming. You know what I mean? Like it's doing great when it can run, but as soon as as soon as its feet are out from under it, it's not really swimming so well. Rivers are hard to swim in anyway. But yeah, I could totally see that thing either bogging down itself or her. And then if it had the e collar on, um, yeah, that's a whole other interesting thing too. To, to do you know what do you know what that means? A e collar? Not Ever heard really. of those things? Nope. Um, I mean, when I think of e collar, I think of like um, it's kind of like a like a um, a device to enforce discipline on an animal. So like maybe if you need the dog to stop right away and not chase, like a deer or a coyote maybe you could hit the switch on it and it'll kind of like tase the dog a little bit. Like, like it doesn't mean it like knocks it down. It could be like different levels that you can turn it up to. So you could turn it up from like one to like 10, 10 being like, just, you know, knock you down, you know, like stunning power. And one being like, Oh, that kind of hurt. I don't think I want to do that. 
Um, so yeah, there's this, it's, I, I, I speculate that that's what they're talking about when they mentioned in this case, the e-collar, but like that is a battery, right? That thing's, is that thing supposed to be in water? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. Just in general, that that whole uh, concept of an e collar sounded like something I would never do to a dog in uh, under no conditions. Like that's kind of crazy. Uh, anyways, dude, without like diverging here, dude, let's let's actually jump to uh, a few interesting uh, details because everything that we're talking about will soon come back around, right? When we talk about the theories. So uh, the first interesting point that I want us to talk about is that um, you know. Uh, Rebecca had recently left her husband, David Bersati, after he had assaulted her, okay, and he had to actually spend three days in jail after. Now, once again, this assault is happening five months before Rebecca disappears. So what jumps out to me is that this man, David Barsati, was a very violent individual. I do have one picture of David Barsati. I want to quickly jump to that picture for the audience members. And he does look like he's a he's a violent individual from the picture. I want to quickly find it. Uh, while I scramble uh, to find the, the image, dude, do you have any... Did, did you manage to uncover anything about uh, about that, that the husband, the ex-husband, David Barsati? Yeah, and, and I guess I want to preface this a little bit by saying, um, especially based on a clip that you played of me, of the parents talking to someone else about this case ahead of time, I, I have to be like a little bit careful about how much I believe and even how much I want to repeat what they say without like, you know, doing exactly what I'm doing, putting disclaimers, because they're a little bit loose with their words and their accusations and they even kind of did things. And I think one of the clips you're going to play, there almost seems like they're kind of exhorting people to harass the sheriff. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound too legal. That sounds like maybe the actions of people that are um, kind of don't give a, don't give an F anymore about whatever. Um, but the rest of us do. Right. So, yeah, I mean, the one, the one thing I wonder, I mean, it is interesting to look at the, the guy there. He does look like a scary dude there. Um, so like the parents, on a um it's a message board posting that supposedly has been verified a verified family account um where they kind of discuss the case with other people who are interested in the case they have insinuated that okay apparently david supposedly but supposedly a bunch of things supposedly he's supposed to be uh what's the word um uh, the reason why he has a caretaker he said he was um like, like he had some form of disability. Like he was, it was essentially supposed to be essentially physically disabled in some way. And I don't know if that was implying that it was actual, like an injury. Uh, I think that was, that was what, they, what he was trying to say. It sounds like there's some amount of controversy over this claim because the parents, um, Rebecca's parents also claim that David is um, essentially lying about his former military status yeah and i actually you know, yeah. want to quickly jump into this because um yeah once again when we're talking about david uh, david uh, has uh, according to the family is a pathological liar and i have a little bit of a write-up that i managed to extract from the web sleuth uh where i i believe uh rebecca's aunt uh, made that post and she says we have learned that the estranged husband has held himself out to be an ex-marine in special operations and has disabilities from war that render him almost invalid. The husband had a previous wife convinced of this as well as his current wife, quote my niece Rebecca. Her family uh, and law enforcement as well. A man that once worked for the estranged husband when the husband owned a Treadstone construction company has confirmed the ex husband, well, the estranged husband lived this military lie with different versions. The truth is that the estranged husband never completed Marine boot camp. He apparently was injured in training at boot camp and never completed it. 
he was subsequently discharged. But according to this previous employee, even this scenario had the grandeur twist of a top secret operation in boot camp, rendering him disabled. The husband is a pathological liar, telling lies to cover lies, which renders him dangerous and he should be suspect a suspect in his current wife's disappearance the estranged husband has even gone so far as to claim he retired from the marines and fabricates a humanitarian effort for service members with no one to share thanksgiving with called quote or orphans thanksgiving this image this image that we uh that we see right now this image uh, on the share screen this is actually from that fake thanksgiving celebration that david bersati uh, organized according to rebecca's extended family members this is all fake like he's here like saying yo uh, thanksgiving for the veterans i'm organizing a thanksgiving for the veterans when he himself has never even completed boot camp apparently that's what rebecca is stating or her her aunt, right? Oh, Rebecca's aunt. Sorry, sorry. Rebecca's aunt, of course. This looks like a bar or something, right? It is bar. It is like, a bar. It is yeah. a bar. Interesting. How, how old is this photo? I wonder. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I, I didn't find yeah. the source. Sorry. Does he have an eye patch or something, or is it just the angle? Yes. There was an eye patch. There was an eye patch. Oh, I mean, maybe something happened. Yeah, I mean, so it's interesting. By the way, that's like a pretty serious accusation from the family, right? So that's where I get. Like I said, I, I got a little bit of a weird vibe, and I guess the audience will decide for themselves when they hear this clip that you're going to play of them in this one, like, mm -hmm. show. But I, I kind of, you know, I sometimes people throw around a lot of, oh, especially people from different parts of the country where, like, maybe making an accusation or, or um, shooting your mouth off doesn't have the same consequences mm -hmm. um, or isn't taken as seriously, let's say as in other parts of the country. So like I kind of, uh, when they say things like that, stolen, it's called stolen valor is like one, one term for it. When someone pretends to be a soldier and they're not, um, or, you know, a former soldier, veteran, et cetera. It's a big deal. I think it's even like, I think it's a crime here in the U S. So when they make something, the uh, claim like that, I really hope that they have some, some kind of like actual proof because otherwise, you know, they could potentially get sued later yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, before I jump to the clips, because I do have some clips, some audio clips that I want to play for the audience members. These clips are from a uh, other another podcast um, called Savage Words Podcast. Uh, it's ran by this one lady with a wacky hair who was um, part of uh, Dog, the Bounty Hunters TV show. Uh, I can't recall her name, but before we jump to those audio clips uh it's basically just an interview with rebecca's parents where rebecca's parents t say some uh interesting details that i want everyone to listen to maybe they will uh have a better picture was this an accident was this a potential murder by david Barsati? until we jump to that i want to go over the details so that we would have everything like straightened out and then we could like you know, because I really want to keep this as structured and as understandable as possible for the audience, of course, as always. So the next thing that I kind of still wanted to quickly uh, run over is the whole situation with Rebecca's personal belongings being neatly piled up alongside the riverbank. Um, I think this is worth talking about because this is an important detail. Now, on the map, everyone who's watching this on the YouTube channel, you can see us jumping to the map right now. So this is, once again, this is where, from what I personally understood, this is where uh, Rebecca's car was found. Now, this is generally, this 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 location right here, this is the Alberton Rest Area. Now, this this thing right here that we can see, this is that popular rock climbing destination. It's just this one really big rock. It's called the Alberton Rock. And now, Rebecca was training the dog somewhere around this, uh, this river bank right here that I have just drawn out on the map, right? And since Rebecca's dog was found down river 
to the west around 10 miles 10 river miles uh down the west uh the the general theory is that you know rebecca uh was around this river bank and they drowned subsequently but this whole area is quite populated and it's a pretty popular attraction for for people so the family thinks that someone must have heard something right um now her belongings were neatly piled around this river bank um once again uh, it's been speculated by the family that rebecca would have jumped right in to save her dog if the dog was drowning but i didn't really understood why the family never addressed the theory that maybe the things were already piled up neatly before Cerberus started drowning. Like, what, like, this is the question to you, man. Do we know that Rebecca had all of those personal belongings in her pockets before Cerberus started drowning? Isn't there a possibility that they were already neatly piled on the river bank do you do i make any sense here you make total stress total sense um let me mention that first of all this sounds a little bit like our chris kremers case that we always talk about right because isn't that all one of those remember it's not exactly the same but the kind of like you know neat pile of stuff found you know outside of a river um while bodies are missing etc um, just kind of reminded me of that when that came up, I was like, huh, what are the odds? Another river. Yeah. But okay. So someone would ask like, well, yeah, yeah. To your point, like, why would the stuff be all piled up like that? Um, yeah, I, I it's what you, what you just said, I didn't even think of this, but we, we said it on this very show. So I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll admit to it. I'll sign up for it. I have made a statement that makes a stereotype or it makes, makes, makes a tendency that. I've, I've observed that, um, at least for my generation, um, women don't like to use pockets as much. So maybe someone anywhere around my age, for different reasons we talked about. Oh, yeah, this is the in the infamous statement, I remember. The infamous statement, yeah, but, but it's like, I mean... We need to make sure it's, dude. I got a disclaimer it nine different ways. Um, and I'll say some of this also just from me talking with my wife, because I'm like, why don't you put your phone in your pocket? Why don't you put your wallet in your pocket, et cetera? And then it's like, oh no, because you know, like wallets, phones, et cetera, they bulk up your pockets. You know, men are pretty used to it. It it except it it does un unacceptable things sometimes in, in clothing that's very tight, um, makes it bulge in weird places, et cetera. So I could see how somebody just they may not even make a habit of putting stuff in their pockets. So that just might be her thing. She might just be like, dude, I only got a wallet, a phone, and a and like a little remote for the e. Because because that that was one of the things, right? It was a remote for the e e e um, what that's that the e thing? collar, e -collar. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she didn't really have that much stuff. So part of me is like, maybe she just she just rolls like that. It's not like she's in the middle of New York, right? If she puts her shit down on a rock, or excuse me, she puts her stuff down on a rock, like who's gonna get it? The beaver, right? Like I mean, there's nobody there's nobody walking by to take her stuff. So she can kind of stroll a hundred yards down the way. And probably, I mean, other than maybe just people that are going to the rock, I guess. But you know what I mean? It's like the, probably the tendency is for people not to steal their stuff there. So from that perspective, that make, I, I think your question is excellent. Why would they assume other than they have a bias, a cognitive bias that is only looking for their explanation? Yeah. Why wouldn't they assume that she just left her stuff out like that? Mm. Or that, oh, well, here's the other thing. So before you said that, the other thing that I thought of, um, researching this was, hey, if she's got the dog in the water and it's hot, well, why wouldn't she also be going in the water too, at least up to her knees, right? At least up to your waist. That's a good point. Uh, that's a good point. And uh, I think maybe she would because it was summer. You know, that's that's a really good point. Uh, a few other details before we jump into those um, mentioned uh, clips, just to paint a better picture for the audience members, right? So uh, this is, let's, let's, let's do it like this. Uh, this is where 
you know, her stuff was found, the Alberton Rock Rest Area. This is that uh, little location called Tarkio. It's some unincorporated land or, or something like that, S something like that, right? Now, um, the dog Cerberus was found, I believe, half a mile southeast uh, from Tarkio. So half in, half out the border. So half, uh, half a mile ha uh, uh, southeast. The way I calculated it, I would assume it was found probably somewhere here. So I, I think it's pretty sa safe to say that it's it was found somewhere here, I would believe. Um, now, or maybe it was here. It's really hard to say, but one of these locations, I think it, it was where the, the, the body was found. Uh, the, does anything jump to you? Like this is a, apparently 10 river miles and 10 days later, some speculation is that the dog was found too far away like that the clark fork river wouldn't drag the body that far away as if the dog was placed there on purpose what do you think about that man nah, if anything i'm i'm kind of surprised it didn't go further you figure a river like that's got to run at least a few miles an hour right and i get that like the dog's gonna get hung up Hung up on stuff and rocks and rapids and maybe get stuck down there in a while in a hole down in the river like the, 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 that happens there's like weird little holes and stuff from these weird currents i think one of the like you said one of the one of the interesting quotes was how like uh the river makes like like a like a, like a 90 degree turn and something you can see it on this map i mean it's like pretty much a 90 degree turn and more in some of these places um and they said that it does weird things where like it, it will just pull you right under I believe it. I've been on the um, Colorado River, um, not even in the bad part, like in the the, the relatively calm part, and um, it scares me to think how much power there is behind a river. Yeah, I think I I don't know. I mean, to me, I would have expected that dog to get pushed even further down, like like ten miles in ten days seems like nothing, right? Like uh, six days, by the way, or six days. Yeah. Uh, okay, ten miles, six days. Yeah, still like I mean, you know. Try like dropping a leaf on top of that river. See how far it'll go. Hmm. It'll go ten miles. Like it'll go ten miles in a couple hours. Um, yeah, of course it's a leaf. I, I really want to say one other thing is that um, the parents, right? At least I heard Rebecca's mother stating that there were several extensive water tests done at the area where Rebecca disappeared. And apparently uh, the water tests indicates that if you do get sucked into it, you would kind of get like thrown out onto the shoreline somewhere nearby. Uh, I think it was, that was the results of that. It, like apparently the water tests indicated that the dog's body or Rebecca's body, if they did drown, would not be pushed down further the river. They would actually get thrown out somewhere way closer to where the you know her positions were found i wonder how they test that like i wonder i mean i, I don't mean that from like just a devil's advocate glenn being a, a jerk picking picking at the you know pulling at the strings of the story i think what makes me wonder is like are they assuming that it's a floating object or a sunken object because i could see a dog and a human whose lungs are full of water and who have sunk into the bottom of this thing and are being dragged by the current along the bottom of that river slowly, mm. which is why it takes a long time and maybe deteriorates the body. And then it won't rise to the surface if the lungs are filled with water. It's just me. I'm not an expert, right? But this is my, just my, my swimming experience. I'm thinking, well, until the body actually starts to decompose, which could take a long time. You know, I mean, it doesn't always happen right away. So the body, I mean, the body does start de decomposing right away, but the gases might not be enough to offset the um, water in the lungs, you know, weighing it down. Does that make sense in the lungs and stomach? Yes, yes. Yeah. Makes so, sense. Makes yeah. sense. La the last thing before we jump to those audio clips was, uh, I found this pretty interesting that, uh, once again, I want to draw a few things out here for the audience members, right? Uh, this is the area where Rebecca 
was last, well, her personal belongings were found. Let's roughly estimate that this is somewhere where the dog later on turns up, right? Um, this is the town pump gas station in Superior. This is where Rebecca was meeting David Barsati's caretaker in order to retrieve her personal belongings that were left at her and David's home. Um, and the person, the caretaker, was the last person to talk to Rebecca. So, don't you, f I mean, it's a, it's definitely an interesting coincidence that the last person to talk to Rebecca was somehow connected to David. Like, they had been uh, split up at that point, I believe, by like five months. At five months, because pr five months prior, uh, you know, David committed that uh, vicious assault uh, against Rebecca. And now the last person that Rebecca spoke to or was known to speak to was connected to the estranged husband. So just wanted to throw that out that I don't know, like the coincidence is kind of interesting here. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, it's true. I mean, if it was Robert Blake, right? Um, that was <laughs> that was the allegation that he didn't do it, but somebody else did, and it was somebody um, in conspiracy. So the you know what the parents are essentially insinu insinuating is that you know if something happened, which they seem to think there's some non-zero chance of um, that's bigger than something small, they seem to think that they seem to maybe insinuate that maybe the the that is like a conspiracy to uh to sort of frame up this like accident it's interesting yeah maybe the maybe david followed the caretaker let's say caretaker doesn't uh, need okay. to yeah. the caretaker doesn't need to be involved like the david right. david knows the caretaker so he knows that he knows that the caretaker is bringing uh, he knows that the caretaker is bringing Rebecca's stuff to Rebecca. He could have easily gotten into his car and just followed uh, the caretaker and see where they will meet up. Now, then he could have later followed Rebecca back to the Alberton rest area. He could have easily potentially kidnapped her and murdered her and murdered the dog. Like the scenario, I know it's, at first, it's like it doesn't connect, but when you really think about it, like you could actually connect it. Like I'm not saying that that's what happened. Of course, I'm I'm just theorizing, but like I can I'm I will not I will say it's definitely not completely completely out of the question. You know? Yeah, I hadn't thought of that, and it is interesting because then it's like, well, if the caretaker is caretaking him full time, um, well, <laughs> then where was he when all the domestic violence was going on? Um, but besides that, would he come back to the house and be like, Hey, where's David? I thought that this guy's an invalid. That that was the word I was looking for earlier. It's supposedly he's an, an, an invalid, but it's like, okay, well, yeah, then, then he wouldn't really have a good explanation for driving around. But I do think it's a lot more like when you put it that way, it does sound more plausible, um, then the caretaker being in on the plot, I guess, other than maybe keeping his mouth shut if he got back home and he's like, oh, no, David, how weird. Um, why didn't he drop off the stuff? Um, well, we know why. But, but real quick, though, I wanted to um, I wanted to question, though, because like there, there, there's this big narrative and there's some, some an indisputable, I guess, facts around like pending charges and things. But like there's something about this the allegations about what's going on in the marriage. I, I guess I, part of me doesn't really want to take at face value that he's necessarily a hundred percent, the bad guy in this thing. Like, I don't feel like I have enough information about what was really going on there because it sounds like there was a lot of, right. You know what I mean? It, 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 whatever happened wasn't a one-time thing. Right. And I, I guess what seemed weird to me, here's, here's part of it. Part of it is just knowing from experience um, and despite sort of it sort of being the flavor of the, the the time right now to always believe whatever, you know, one gender says about what happened in the situation. That doesn't really not fair from a legal point of view because we know domestic violence goes both ways, um, goes multiple ways in a relationship. Um, so like part of me really wonders like what the hell were they fighting about so much? 
Like, what was really going on there? Do they have? Do they have? Do they have drug and alcohol problems? Like, what were they having? Big drunken blowouts? Like the part that she? I guess the part. You know, it may, it may seem weird that I'm laboring on this, but the part about her getting kicked out of the house makes me wonder if she was maybe at least part of the problem with some kind of alcohol or other issue, you know, because people can get really awful when they're drunk and they're not normally like that. And I keep on wondering, like, like, I, I, I mean, me just really, little... really quickly, just one step in. Cause I did dig into her, like, apparently like she was kind of, well, really beloved by the coworkers, by her new, yeah. like, uh, workplace. And then, uh, well, there's apps there, well, there's zero indications of this anywhere. And there's only indications of her being super great. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean. Like, which, which I, I, I could, I could 100 percent believe. But I don't think that those people went home with her, and then saw what happens at night when she pops open a bottle of wine or something. You know what I mean? Like, so there's people. There's there's there are plenty of people that are that are great, great during the day when they're at their workplace or you know when they're at their workplace, right. and then they go home and then you know like the bottle comes out right. and they're like you know Doctor. Uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Um, it, it, not, not saying that's what happened there, but like I, I, I kind of, I feel like it's, it's only fair to you know, a the, these these charges are alleged, right? Like the, there's no one's been convicted of anything with domestic violence, um, and like there are some some laws that kind of tie their hands in terms of, like sometimes for some of these things when the cops get called, somebody's going to jail tonight. You know what I mean? So it's like let's pick let's pick which one looks less guilty. And, you know, before anybody says, yeah, you know, Glenn, that, that's not fair to women. Well, I'll just say that I had a family member who got taken for, for a domestic thing like this, who got taken to jail. And she was the one. So she was the one that got taken, not the guy. And it was like the cops decided based on what they heard through the door with the argument who was going to jail that night. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that person that went to jail had you know 100 percent of the blame um in that thing that happened you know years and years ago right, not right. not not me it was it was someone else i know but i'm just saying you know what i mean it's just, so it's so it's it's complicated and it's it's messy so that's why i get i get a little bit worried when i hear the parents because natural it's natural for the parents to portray the other person who's not their child as the bad guy because whose side are they going to take right of course that, we understand that we quickly yeah. want to also add in that the ex, the previous wife, is apparently like of David is also like reported Island like on. domestic Say abuse that. and that okay. well, she's yeah, also scared. Busy. Apparently, she's scared for her life as well. And then, er and then everyone yeah. who's who's with David around David kind of says that he's like a compulsive <laughs> liar. Kind of Okay. And that well, he never maybe, really maybe. went. To, so <laughs> do, I really think that in this case, it doesn't look like yeah, it's he's he's maybe, the, the the good boy yeah. here. And I mean, it doesn't look that yeah. way. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm fighting for the wrong side. Then okay, yeah, <laughs> I think maybe. so. Dude. I think in this one, it kind of feels like in in some cases, it feels like it's it's yeah, it could be in this case. Kind of my research suggests that David is yeah. definitely like kind of really like a, a big time scumbag. You know what I mean? Something's not going on. Yeah, so maybe just just somebody with like a like a like a definite dysfunctional yeah. relationship style. Okay, so yeah, I'm not I'm not defending wife feeders today. Um, nor would I want to, but I am, I, I'm just trying to point out that like the actual, he, 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 he could, what you said could be a hundred, may very well be a hundred percent true, but it may not mean that he was a hundred percent, you know, to blame and whatever's going on. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop beating that dead horse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah keep going. Woo. That did uh, let's just let's just leave it at that. That like there's a lot of people now coming out to say that David like is a scumbag. So that's news, we we okay. never we never we never met the guy. So of course we don't yeah. know. Let's just leave it at that. That he like 
everyone kind of seems to be thinking that he's a big time scumbag dude um now i think it's about time since we really talked about everything i wanted to talk about it's about time for us to jump to those audio clips that i have been teasing now for a while i think it's a good time so let's listen to them i have four in total and this is the rebecca's parents talking a little bit about the case so the first clip that i want to um play you guys is about the dog the how the dog was found so let's listen in to what the parents had to say about the dog really quickly guys then when we looked at the x-ray you could see the dog's electric collar right in their throat embedded in their throat and then they said well there was no foul play to the dog so I say he was electrocuted by the shock collar. Then when we looked at the x-ray, you could see the dog's electric collar right in their throat, embedded in their throat. And then they said, well, there was no foul play to the dog. So I say he was electrocuted by the shock collar. Right, so we already talked a little bit about this before even recording you and me, man, and you kind of gave out a really good explanation here that, you know, this is that electric dog collar, and from the audio we can hear Rebecca's father, Jerry, uh, describe, uh, like, the, the x-rays that he saw of... Uh, Cerberus, the, the the dead dog before he was cremated, um, and apparently the collar, the electric collar, was embedded in the throat so hard that the vet couldn't even remove the the collar before cremating the dog. So the collar was cremated with the dog, and apparently what the uh, what uh, what um, Jerry, uh, Rebecca's father, believes is that potentially someone on purpose electrocuted the dog to death uh, and yeah so this is his claim uh, but what what do you think about this i don't think that, that e-collar can do that like i don't think you know just just for the exact reason that you expressed kind of revulsion when i mentioned what what an e-collar because those things are not i don't know I don't, I don't i don't do that that other kind of training but yeah i mean it's not something a lot of dog owners really want for their dog to like tase them um but maybe it makes sense when they can run away um in that kind of environment yeah I, I, so like so like he's he's like interpreting x-rays and he's got kind of this anecdotal thing that like the vet said I mean, once again I, I apologize if it sounds like I, i'm gonna kind of take this stance in this this case because i am gonna kind of kind of take a devil's advocate stance as much as i want to be sympathetic to families um for different reasons various reasons as as we go maybe i'm, I'm just going to try to raise my my points for why this case bugs me a little bit um and and not in the way people would want so yeah like like uh, you know what i mean he's sort of like uh so sort of like he he knows more than the experts is the part that's a little weird to me and i'm like okay well embedded in his throat and i remember you and i yeah we, we had like kind of a weird not weird. We, we, I think it was it was a good attempt to try to see what it meant, meant by that because like like I know your initial thought was well was he saying that he like the dog swallowed the collar and I was like well that sounds really awful I don't know how we'd do that but then even the other thing sounds weird too the embedded thing sounded almost like a tick like it had been pushed into its neck. And by the way, that was the other thing. He kept mixing up the dog's pronouns. Like, is the dog a, a boy or a girl? It's one of them, right? So, like, when he says there, he's sort of like, you don't know if he's talking about the vet or the person or the dog or what, or the, the you know what I mean? So, the, even the guy, the guy's manner of speaking is a little bit weird. And he's got that thick accent, too, East Coast accent. But yeah, it's like, I don't really even know what he, what he means. Like, like, I think the dog was dead for six days. It had this thing. That probably kind of rotted into its flesh. The the vet was probably like, yeah, I'm not gonna like risk an infection getting this stupid thing out of its neck um, since it just drowned anyway. Um, who cares? Let's just burn this thing. I don't know. I mean, I I kind of I kind of see what he's saying, but like I don't I don't know that those e collars can even be used to intentionally um, for this exact reason. 
electrocute a dog. I think that's just one of the things you right. can't do with it because that would be cruelty to animals. They don't sell that thing so you can execute your dog. But but dude, dude, dude uh, here I want to step in with some information from Web Sleuth. Rebecca's aunt said the dog was cremated with its e collar on because the vet claimed she could not remove it. It was discovered after cremation of Rebecca's dog that that same wet that claimed the dog was too decomposed to uh, to, ne to necropsy and uh, too decomposed uh, to get like a better idea of what happened to it, that wet was a friend of that estranged husband. Okay, so that wet who performed this thing was a friend with David Bersari, according to Rebecca's aunt. So that's another interesting, you know, twist and and and, and, and angle. That's that's what the aunt says. I can't help but think that every time somebody says something that the family doesn't want to hear, that person automatically becomes a friend of David. So that's like sort of my cynical thought about that. I don't, we know. don't know. We I don't, don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say it's obviously a very small town. So I would imagine everybody there is either friends or enemies. 70,000 um, 70, people, by the way. 70? 70,000? It's, 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 it's not that. That's the thing. It looks small. I looked at it. It was 70,000. That's not so. Yeah, you're right. That's not so tiny. I mean, it's not huge, but it's not um, It's not nothing. I don't know. I feel like it, may, it might be kind of still a relatively small world where like if you're kind of in the same social spheres maybe it's easier i mean you know what i mean it's much i mean I, I i run into people i know at the airport here in los angeles in a city of 20 million so um or 18 million or whatever we are so uh i just feel like yeah maybe maybe a lot of people there know him i don't know especially a vet right a vet a vet serves a lot of people so a vet is more likely to know anybody that has a pet because vets vets and by the way vets are also kind of few and in between like there's actually even less vets than our doctors so um yeah i mean i don't, I don't want yeah. us to like stay here at this point it's just something i wanted to mention all right dude how about we jump to the other things to the other clip that um was uh, you know that i extracted from this interview and this is the parents talking about the personal belongings that were found uh you know at the scene so let's listen in and uh and one of the one of the other troubling things about this is that they've essentially come out and told you that it's a river accident even though they have no proof that it is a river accident they have they have flip-flops and a t-shirt on a beach. They have no evidence yep. that she's actually in or walked anywhere near the water. And, right. and they have essentially told you that they're not willing to do any type of land search at all. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Now, here's the troubling part about that shirt on the, the beach. When they showed us a picture of Rebecca in a car, taking a selfie of herself and a dog. On the same day. On the same day. She had a blue tank top on. If she had a long sleeve shirt on, she would have had it on in the car. And then she would have put it on, uh, uh, threw it to the, to the ground. Well, that one, it, it was a long sleeve t shirt, right? Yeah, it was, well, it was a long sleeve shirt. It was and, a long sleeve shirt. And yeah. so that, but it was 90 but, degrees out. Right, exactly. That's, that's our point. 94, yeah. 95. And yeah. I've had that confirmed by a weather tracker in Alberton. So yeah. if, if she had a long sleeve shirt on, she would have had it on in the car. And then she would have took it off at the river. Yeah. But she didn't have it on in the car. She yeah. just had a tank top on in the, in the car. Right. So where did this shirt come from? Where did the shirt? We don't know. And we don't even know if it's Rebecca's shirt. We don't even know if it's Rebecca. Not only that, who placed the who 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 perfectly placed the ID? Right, the ID and the credit ID. card. Exactly. Like, and why would you ever leave your credit card? Like a exactly. face we we asked the same questions. Yeah. So, we thought oh, those yeah. probably would have been in the car, locked in the car. This this has a lot of like troubling points to it and yes. i think what 
Yeah, so that was um, Rebecca's family talking about the personal belongings that were found. Once again, the interesting point here is that the family brought up a selfie that Rebecca took while she was still in the car on the same day. And apparently in the car, as she was taking the selfie of herself, she was wearing a blue tank top. But then later on, next to the pile of personal belongings left at the riverbank, there was a long sleeve shirt left uh, next to the riverbank. Now, the family says they don't know if that shirt even belonged to Rebecca, which is obviously if you're not living with your parents anymore for like 10 years they probably don't know every piece of clothing that you own so i think that's kind of explainable but at the same time they say that rebecca would have probably had that shirt on in the car as she took the selfie so she took the selfie with the tank top but later on there was a long sleeve t-shirt found at the riverbank i mean i, I don't know like it seemed when I think about it, I think this particular detail is a little bit of a stretch, but then I'm not going to completely uh, downplay it, dude. Um, I know that you have some thoughts about this whole shirt situation, right? Yeah, and I, I man, I, 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 mean, I actually kind of want to apologize a little bit this part of the show. I, I've been having a little bit of a a rough week, so if it seems like I'm a, I'm a little bit snarkier than my, my usual self and a little bit quicker to disbelieve this case, it might just be bad timing. So I feel a little bit bad for these folks that maybe, maybe you're catching Glenn in a bad mood um, or a, 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 a skeptical mood. Um, yeah. The shirt thing, like you said, it, it, just, it just, just feels like one of those things where the, you can't win with them. Like no matter what happens, they're going to interpret it as supporting their theory. And it's, it's very biased. So let me, let me, let me just think this through for a second. Cause I, I was even confused when they were explaining it what they were trying to say. Cause I was like, okay, wait, she's wearing a tank top in the car. It's a hot day. She's got the air conditioning on. That's why she's not wearing the long sleeve shirt, even in the car with the air conditioning, because it's a hot day. Like they keep telling us. Right. So like on hot days, even when I bring a sweatshirt in the car for later, when it's cold, I don't wear the sweatshirt in the car when it's hot. Right. And it's, a hot day that's when she took the picture she gets to the place it's a hot day the dog's running around she has a second shirt because she's going in and out of water that is from melted snow this is literally where the where the river comes from it's from the mountains up there in montana so the that's fresh off the mountain freezing water but it's hot so i guess it's like somewhat tolerable but th that water is still like 50 something degrees i'm sure maybe 60 okay so then when you get out, you're cold. You want to put on, if you're especially going in there with the dog, and you know you know she's going to touch the water if she's touching that dog, right? So it's going to be cold. And then so I'll just finish off this point by saying that, personal anecdote again, went to Montana my first night ever in my whole life in Montana. We stayed at this hotel in the summer, same time of year as this. So July-ish, let's say July or August, so maybe even hotter. That night in Montana in the middle of summer, they set a temperature low record. So I think the temperature dropped into like the 30s um, during the night. Like actually, we we went we went swimming. It was like six seven o'clock at night, and we went swimming at the hotel like we always did. We always did this in motels. That was our thing. We would like go to motels and swim on vacation because we loved swimming. We didn't have a pool, and I remember we were freezing. We were like, "What the hell's going on?" And then the next morning. When we're having breakfast, we read the paper and we're like, oh, the temperature got all the way down to the 30s during the night. So, like, the reason why I'm saying that is, you know, these parents from Virginia, they don't really know, like, Montana weather that well. You know, I, I understand they did research on the temperatures and this and that. But, like, I mean, I'll say even Los Angeles during the summer at night, it gets cold. Like, at night, it'll drop to the 60s and below. So, like, I don't really, you know, I, I don't really put a lot of. A lot like the shirt thing is probably the least impressive. And maybe that's the thing. That's one of the thing that biases me the most when it comes to whatever these parents say, because now it's like, I can't take the other things they're saying seriously when they're throwing in ridiculous claims.
Okay, yeah, well, that was about the shirt, but what about the credit card? I, I do agree that the shirt is, like, maybe not something I would focus on, but the credit card, the fact that she left her credit card um, next to the riverbank was kind of interesting. I would also assume probably to leave it in the car. Now, I know that uh, <laughs> you're trying to get hired as uh, David's attorney here, so, <laughs> so like, do you have any any points i just think it's like a generational thing again i I don't know i mean do you do you know do you know people that keep their their credit card in their um in their in their smartphone case do you know people that do that like like the smartphone wallet thing like i i know people that literally just carry Hmm. like a smartphone and like a credit card and like they don't even carry their id anymore probably because it's scanned in there or whatever um, or maybe they'll they'll carry their ID, their credit card, and a smartphone, and not even a wallet, because they're like, oh, I got everything, you know what I mean? I've got it all right here. I don't really need like you know my AAA card and stuff, because you know. So that's that's my thought. I just I just think like her parents are are like old school where they're like, I want a wallet, I want a purse, and, you know, I keep my things on me. I don't, you know, I live I live in a in a more urban area in Virginia where you can't leave your, your credit card on the sidewalk. That's crazy. And then meanwhile, this lazy, this, you know, Rebecca, she's living out there in the, in the rural Montana area. She's, she's, you know, running her dog around in rivers and, 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 you know, living there in nature. Like who cares about that credit card? That thing gets lost. You know what I mean? I think it's just a different, it's a different situation. I think they're kind of um, once again, maybe obsessing, the same way I obsess about things for 10 minutes and talk about them too right. long. I think they're, they're kind of obsessing about that. I feel yeah. like, I feel like, uh, even though if it's not connected to like, for say foul play, it's still an odd thing. Like for say, I wouldn't necessarily like try to completely well, yeah. n- like normalize. No, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. No, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. I, 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 I know. I'm, yeah. I, I know what you mean. Like, like I, I, I'm probably, minimizing a little bit but then once again i kind of wonder like is that also the kind of things if she's like a free spirit which it sounds like that could also be the kind of thing where it could cause friction in a relationship too right so the same kind of thing that made her kind of want to leave home and leave things behind and leave the structure behind and maybe her parents are kind of almost revealing some of that kind of structure and kind of limited thinking about how how you live life and then she goes out and she lives this free spirit life out in Montana. And maybe this guy that she gets married to, maybe he can't handle it either. Maybe she is like doing stuff that like, you know, if it bugs her parents and she leaves her credit card around, maybe she did something else that once again is innocent, not something worth getting beaten over, having a big marriage shattering argument. But you know what I mean? Enough of those things where it's like cats and dogs and like, you know, oh, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm a neat person. The other person's a messy person. And pretty soon you're like, you're getting into it with each other all the time. That's, that's, that almost makes me kind of understand more that maybe she had a very relaxed personal style or a very carefree personal style that maybe wouldn't work for certain personalities. It's interesting. Like I'm almost, almost getting a better portrait just talking about these possibilities with you and listening to how her parents kind of you know think about the world let's let's listen to some more stuff from the parents uh this is a a a little clip that i extracted where the parents talk about the estranged husband david barsati let's listen into this one guys i know it's no accident that this lineage is all now kind of happened right uh, you know and there is a big question mark over this guy's head He's been charged. Right. And, you know, however that's going to play out, it's going to play out, uh, you know, in, in the criminal justice system. But right. uh, how much energy has he put forth in trying to find his wife? There has been none that, Zero. that, that we're aware of. Zero. And the other thing that precipitated before Rebecca went missing that I forgot to say is that she had a scheduled meeting with David's caregiver to pick up personal items that were that left day. at the home. And so they met in Superior at Town Pump Convenience Station to uh, for Rebecca to pick up those items. And then Rebecca went missing after that meeting. 
Yeah. You know, all you got to do is look at the TV right now and look at the Gabby case. I know. Look at the domestic violence that happened there, and it was just kind of fluffed yeah. off. And, the and failure now for, she's dead. And, and the failure of law enforcement to step in when it was appropriate to do so. Exactly. exactly. So yeah, that's uh, the parents talking a little bit about the the husband. Mainly, the the one takeaway is that the husband apparently, to their knowledge, has zero uh, had had spent zero time trying to look for his wife. Which I don't find it super strange. It doesn't look like they cared for each other all that much, and they did they were separated for five months. Um, but yeah, dude, uh, anything you want to react to that? A little short uh, clip. <laughs> I think it's actually one of the few times I'll take the parent's side. Um, I do think it is a little weird. I mean, it's 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 like a back and forth because on one end, you might, like you said, there might be a lot of resentment built up and they just might both have been done with each other, especially after he ended up in jail for three days after the last entanglement. Um yeah, that so that that's that it's kind of weird that he's not. I don't know. You think you would feel something for someone right. you spend so much time with? Yeah, I, I guess the the what was the other thing that, that bothered them so much? It was like uh, I'm sorry, just to recap. Uh, from yeah, that's the thing. I also kind of lost uh, track. Yeah, there. lost. There was, there was there was something they were saying. Oh no, you know what? Uh, they were they were. I I I'll agree with them on the um. You know, if this stuff was going on and if there were, it was like, apparently, like you said, there is some kind of ongoing issue. Yeah. Why weren't the police more responsive to to domestic stuff? I mean, I, I guess I, th I think I think you have a little more to play mm. from this clip. So I'm going to I'm going to save kind of the rest of my retort for. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, well, the the last clip, the last clip is basically um, kind of. Uh, where you guys, the audience members, can find and give information to the family, but it also kind of will show the relationship between the family and the police in this case, because the family is highly critical, at least in this interview, of law enforcement. So I, wanna, I wanted you to, for sure, guys, listen to this last clip I have. Tell everyone how they can reach you. What, uh, how should they be able to contact you? Okay, so there's a Facebook page called Find Rebecca Barsati, and it's Rebecca R E B E K A H yes. and Barsati B A R S O T T I. They can call me or text me. My phone number is five four zero eight three four six one three one, and I'll return it. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm going to, I, I'm not going to put up your phone number, but I will put up, I'm definitely okay. going to put up how they're going to get. Uh, I'll tell you what's even better. Give them a uh, Sheriff Talks telephone number. He's the one yeah. that doesn't want to listen to us. Give it to him. Let all these people call him. Yeah. So He's a the Sheriff's Department number is 406-822-3555. And uh, there's no detective to ask for, correct? No, there's no detective. Yeah. Sheriff Talk is the man. All right. All right. Uh, no disrespect to the department, but uh, department, you can do better. You can do better than this. Yes, they can. You can do better. These people came all the way out here from Virginia looking for their baby. Please, please do everything you can to get some resolution to, the, to this family. Yep. So that's the last clip. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, man. That last lady, the, the radio, the host, uh, freaking wannabe Nancy Grace. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of like, I, I get that she's like doing this for, for content and whatever. Maybe she really cares, but like something's really frustrating to me when I hear somebody that's like that saying, you need to do, better it's like hey lady why don't you get your ass out there in montana woods and go look how much how much looking did you do because i think you have a specific number that you mentioned um in the uh the intro to the case about how much time they spent yeah apparently what what the once again this is not this is the sheriff's office uh, they said that around 2000 volunteer hours were utilized as well as 
30% of Missoula's search and rescues fuel budget for the entire year of 2021. 30% of the entire fuel for the rescue missions, search and rescue missions were spent on this case alone. So apparently the sheriff's office says that they did spend enough time. But the family, but the, but this, uh, yeah, this Nancy Grace, wannabe Nancy Grace, wannabe Nancy Grace lady, she's kind of like, yo, you need to do even better, you know? Yeah, but who's gonna pay for it? Is she gonna pay for it? Like that's that's the thing. It's, it's like a, it's kind of tragic, right? Because you have these small, little, I mean, it, frankly, like not I maybe mean, not impoverished, kind of cash-strapped rural counties, and then this random person gets lost or goes missing or whatever happens. And then it's like, yeah, on one hand, of course, you want to find the person to give the family closure. But, you know, like the, the family's going down this like JFK conspiracy rabbit hole with this thing. And and meanwhile, like, yeah, what about the next person that gets, you know, the next person who, who has a husband or wife and family and kids and whatever, and they go missing? You know, what, what if this happens two or three more times in a time frame? Does that mean that like that person doesn't get found so that like her parents can they're not going to get her daughter back right at this yeah. point? So like it really, what is this? What is this going to do if, if it's about justice? OK, I understand. But like at some point, yeah, you're starting to like actually maybe do more damage right. than good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, dude, dude, that's completely fine. I really want to say that to Savage Worlds podcast, uh, obviously, apologize, apologies from our end a little bit. We definitely want to start any podcast beefs. Uh, I think we already started that one beef uh, regarding the Prisma Reyes case. I think let's let's definitely not start more beefs. So once again, uh, no hard feelings there. I hope uh, to that lady. Uh, if she's listening to this now, uh, I really quickly want to jump to the last few interesting details that I found on WebSleuth, and then I think we can jump to the theories. And dude, these some of these details are like definitely new, drastic, dramatic twists and angles in this case, dude. And uh, definitely, we definitely need to read these out because uh, otherwise we will have a bad, we will portray a bad picture. So uh, one of the details is that fingerprints were never taken from her personal items fingerprints were never taken from the vehicle and the scent dogs were never brought in to determine if rebecca in fact went into the river these things were never done now uh another interesting thing and a very a very uh let's say very bad let's put it this way twist to the story is that Someone said Rebecca's husband threatened to drown Rebecca and her dog two weeks prior to her disappearance. Rebecca's estranged husband continued making threats on Rebecca and her dog's life throughout text conversations between Rebecca and her mother, which both sheriff's departments are aware of like both um missoula and i believe it was crystal county right something like that uh they are both aware of these things right so text messages threatening text messages threatening to kill threats to kill rebecca and her dog were sent okay so that's like a fact from what i understand and then Rebecca goes missing on shortly after meeting the husband's uh, caretaker to get the stuff, which I assume the the David Bersati could have easily followed uh, followed the caretaker. He was a compulsive liar and a complete scumbag. From reportedly, I didn't meet the guy, but reportedly he was a scumbag. So he could have easily followed the caretaker, okay, and found out where Rebecca was, and he was making threats to kill her. So. Ooh, you know what I mean. Now, let's see what we have uh, otherwise. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, that uh, Rebecca's aunt. The last thing I want to say that Rebecca's aunt stated this in the Web Sleuth forum that we have since learned that 
he, meaning um, David Bersari, was also physically and mentally violent in his previous marriage, which ended in divorce, and the previous wife still fears for her life. The previous wife has called both sheriff's departments to provide information about her life experiences with her ex-husband, now Rebecca's estranged husband, David Bersari. So the ex his ex-wife is also like yo this guy is crazy and i think there might be a connection so the ex-wife is like yo look into this guy please law enforcement so that's all i wanted to add dude and i think unless you got anything else to add we could jump to the theories and as i've said there are two big theories so what do you say man or shall we add something? Yeah, let's do it all right, man. So as I've said, the, the theory is really, I mean, it's a missing persons case. It could go in many different directions, but I think it's pretty clear that the ones that we should discuss is either is Rebecca uh, drowned, it was an accident, or if her ex-husband uh, killed her. So there are two theories, and I think, yeah, if we would just go over the theories, if we would start off with the accident theory right i mean the accident theory is very convenient in my opinion it's probably the theory that i would lean to because i never really saw the guy i never really met david bersati so it just seems like a convenient theory right rebecca is found rebecca's stuff is found next to a riverbank her dog is found 10 river miles downstream but dude but 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 i have a question to you and this is the this is the footage that we're looking at right now this is the footage from uh the scene where's rebecca's body like this is the question we never asked so if she drowned where's the body dude because her there's no sign of her body like where where could her body be would if if the dog turned up then why hadn't why hasn't rebecca's body turned up like what do you think of that yeah, and this is always like the the kind of troubling question in a lot of these cases where you know we think there was some kind of natural death. Um, yeah, what happened to it? I mean, I will say that uh, you know there has been other cases. I mentioned this time and time again, the Kern River here in California that has a lot of um, let's say deaths and drownings. Like bodies do sometimes stay underwater. For a long time like in cars and things like that there's no car here so yeah it's like what what is the is the body trapped underwater still and still just you know just by the, the sheer force of the water just in the perfect place where it hasn't come loose yet and it's getting kind of eaten out by fish and the elements the one thing I, I did think about too because yeah you're right like the dog turned up why didn't the person turn up because that's to me that that's the only problem. There's, there's two things that really bother me right now about the accident theory. The body not being found is one thing, and actually the part you just said at the end. You know, I mentioned that my mind could probably change over the course of this conversation. I think anybody listening to this conversation would have said, "Glenn's not going to change his mind." I uh, the, the the thing you said about the text is probably the most damning thing I heard out of the whole thing. That being said, if I look at like what just the odds are, you know, that happened. Like she was interacting with a really big dog that couldn't swim well in a place where you don't want to be swimming anyway, even if you do swim well um, most of the time. And then there's probably a pretty good chance that since she was resetting her life, which is a really hard thing to do at 33 to start all over again, um, that dog probably meant a lot to her. So I'm betting you if the dog started to drown, either because it was struggling just from you know the, the strain of it or if the the maybe the um the e-collar maybe it wasn't supposed to be submerged in water the battery you know the the battery in it starts messing up the dog starts getting tased or going into a seizure she runs in there to save the dog the dog like you said the dog looked like it was bigger than her she only weighs 135 pounds that dog looked like it could weigh 100, 100 at least 100 pounds if not 135 pounds. So I think they both go down to the bottom. Um, and when you're drowning, I'm, I'm sure a drowning animal animal will do what a drowning human does, which is try to grab onto the thing that um, is trying to rescue them in it's panic. And um, I think they both go under. I just, I don't have a good 
solid explanation other than what i just said for what happened to her body yeah so that's that okay that's that's the accident theory yeah no that's the accident theory yeah so the body mainly the biggest i mean the pros to the to the to this theory are pretty obvious to me you know her stuff is found uh, next to the riverbank the dog is found dead apparently drowned but there's speculation what really happened to the dog because we don't really know for sure but still kind of looks like it probably drowned um then you know her car is found at this place there's video showing her like throwing sticks into the water and the dog is like yeah i agree that that video of uh, the dog uh, retrieving the the stick is definitely doesn't look like it's the super a super safe scenario for the dog as well so there there are these things that uh, lead me to think that this could be an accident of course but the fact that the body didn't turn up and we could jump to the map really quickly like the body never really turned up and we know that the current is taking uh everything down west to the westward direction and another thing is that apparently these locations right they're like populated there's like some fishing happening like especially in this location right here um this is Tarikyo fishing axis so i would assume you know if you could just look here there's like some fishing happening uh so it's not like a completely secluded place uh, it's frequented by people so the fact that the body never really turned up it's pretty troubling for sure uh, now let's jump to the next theory i think the next theory is the theory that david bersati killed his wife uh yep killed his wife rebecca i think the motive is there uh well we don't know of course but it, it could be the motive that he was resentful and uh, that he had to spend three days in prison and maybe there was some other like legal repercussions after this so he was kind of feeling annoyed with her so it was definitely pretty weird and pretty uh interesting how that whole scenario potentially went down with the marriage right and whatnot but now i want to jump to the thing that i want to jump to the whole logistic side of the of the theory right how would logistically uh this scenario would play out so my proposed scenario is that rebecca meets the caretaker at the town pump gas station retrieves her stuff now uh the husband may have been already spying on the caretaker now he gets the location rebecca's location now rebecca drives all the way down to the alberton rest area right here maybe the husband follows her uh the you know the rebecca just goes on and trains her dog but because we know that rebecca definitely trained her dog we have the video maybe she puts down the the video or whatever um maybe you know david uh david uh, Bersati sneaks up on her uh assaults her uh maybe uh I don't know that's that's one once again how would he deal with the dog maybe the the fact that there was an electric collar maybe that works maybe don't really i don't really see how he like attacks her as well as the dog because the dog was looked like you the dog could mess you up like it's a, it's a big dog so once again somehow manages to subdue both the, the dog and rebecca maybe he actually kills the dog lets the dog flow down the river where it was eventually found maybe he killed the dog maybe he took rebecca from the alberton rest area and uh, drove her somewhere else and potentially killed her or got rid of the body maybe that was the case maybe he kills the dog on the scene lets the dog float away abducts rebecca as well maybe he sneaks up to rebecca knocks rebecca unconscious uh then kills the dog with the electrocution uh technology on the collar lets the dog float away um leave like the stuff on the ground next to the riverbank maybe it was there already so maybe they just leave that stuff he takes um rebecca and you know disposes of her body somewhere else me like i mean that's like the rough scenario i would see here in this case i don't really see 
any other ways to be honest so what are your thoughts about this theory and about like what i just proposed here man yeah i mean it's it seems pl- some parts of it are plausible um certainly the part about angry ex-husband resentful about you know marriage gone sour that makes sense to me kind of like oj style um like i think a lot of the other elements you you pose to me make sense i think what i'm still lacking here is some like real evidence so the e-collar thing um while we were talking i actually looked it up um i i, I should have probably done a little more research ahead of time yeah and like like the industry that makes the e-collar stuff all those manufacturers they stress that their are collar the shock collar thing is kind of that's why they call it e-collar because the shock part is really apparently it's the colors meant as an intention getter it's not supposed to be a punishment tool so it sounds like it's probably impossible to or it'd be very difficult if it is possible to, to actually kill your dog with this thing now the one thing i would point out is if you could do it that way which i don't know why you would want to do it um i don't think you could do it with the collar and not have it very obvious the dog had like kind of been writhing around in pain if that makes sense you know grinding itself against the ground and you know just i mean just, just physical sense I, I understand the dog didn't really have like a full autopsy or anything and had kind of a weird cursory examination but it sounds like the dog wasn't too damaged other than just drowning so that that, that part bothers me i think the the idea that maybe he framed up this whole scenario <sighs> It sounds that that part doesn't sound as uh, you know what I mean like like I guess if there have been signs of like a violent struggle or even if her body had been found with some some signs of like let's say uh, 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 violence to her body that could be interpreted in different ways either as from you know being dragged down along the river after drowning versus getting beaten to death or something like that would then then I would I I, I would feel more like she had been killed. By someone she knew like which would be if she had been killed if she, if she had been murdered statistically that's like the more likely scenario right but um i don't know i think i think that that's where it starts to fall apart for me is when it starts to become like this kind of jfk-esque conspiracy like all these little meticulous things that like if one thing is wrong it would spoil that whole plot right so like if the dog was stabbed or you know what i mean like even like uh, even to try to kill the dog without leaving a mark, well, like how would you, you know other than the e collar thing, which I think is 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 probably proven not to be real. I mean, I guess you could try to electrocute a dog with like a car battery. I don't know why you do that, but you know what I mean like that. You know, I don't, I don't yeah. even know that that would work. Yeah. So this isn't like me trying to explore the macabre ways of doing horrible things to dogs. It's just pointing out that like the the from my perspective what the parents propose which i think kind of overlaps what you said but you've you've given a very comprehensive like i think very fair maybe more fair than what the parents have depicted account of how this could have happened i think in ways that maybe they didn't even really think out that's where i think it's like it's like their part of it and where the the parts that seem to me to have more prosaic like kind of mundane explanations like it's sad you know the dog started going i by the way I don't think that I could have saved that dog if that dog started drowning in water above my head or even water that was running at any kind of good clip in like a river like that. Like you can't even get grip with your feet in some of those places. You'll break your ankles right off in some of those places where there's pits and stuff, you know, like, like it's, it's not as easy as it looks. So that's the part where I'm like, from my perspective, that just makes more sense. But I think I am really troubled coming out of that, that part of the theory. Like I, there is a, I definitely you have opened a bigger slice of doubt in my mind now about that theory i think just based on like the uh the other accounts of text david's messages. like previous life yeah it's in the text messages text messages the one thing i i, I thought was crazy by the way just so i don't lose this point um <laughs> did, did he really threaten to drown her yeah i was thinking what a what what a random thing to, to threaten somebody in a landlocked state Right. I mean, you guys don't even have an ocean. You have like lakes, I guess, and streams. That's a good point. You know what I mean? Like what a, yeah. What a, what a strange way to threaten to kill somebody. Unless of course you knew that they were um, like, like afraid of that. 
uh, drowning, like like they had a phobia or of driving like that, or were known to hang out with the dog next to rivers, next to the river all the time. Yeah, so that that that's where it would make sense, you know, admittedly. Yeah, no, see, that's that's the thing. So, um, I guess you know, uh, I think we're pretty much done with the discussion this week. Once again, I'm, I'll be super interested to see what the audience members thinks about this case. Um, it's been a good good show, real nice show, dude. Uh, you know, without before we sign out, uh, anything you want to add? Well, what about uh, let's let's, uh, let's let's not break with tradition. You want you want to give a percentage breakout? What are your, of what are your course, thoughts? Of course, of course. Yeah. For me, for me personally, I will say. Uh, if I had to do the percentages right now, I will say that it's probably 80% accident and 20% foul play. I think so, because because like the foul play, it's all kind of like circumstantial and the accident, like, you know, she's by the river, she's hanging out by the river law enforcement says this river i know it's like not what the family wants to hear and i'm open to like any other theories but i'll just say 80 percent accident and i'll say 20 percent foul play something like that well that is amazing i did not you got my exact percentage and i, I really thought you were going to come in like probably closer to 50 or 60 percent i thought you were going to have a a lower chance of the accident than i had but uh no you came in exactly the same exact percentage yeah. i was gonna say the one thing i will say is that i give it 80 percent accidental i'll say 10 percent somebody she knew so that you can put you know ex-husbands in that bucket and then i'll say 10 percent somebody she didn't know like uh we, we talked about the random the random uh the random malevolent person the one thing i'll kind of finish off that theory about for those 20 percent is like you pointed out those areas do have some amount of people doing active stuff like fishing and climbing rocks and and doing stuff because it's so beautiful there that would be a really risky thing to do to pull off a crime but hey i mean you know supposedly oj and robert break barbara blake allegedly allegedly supposedly you know that stuff all went down in the middle of crowded urban areas so uh, and I've, I've seen the places where it happened so if it could happen there um why not in the middle of the woods in montana totally man that's a good way to sign off i think of this show dude seriously it's a good point uh but yeah to the audience members seriously guys leave your thoughts this is a lesser known case i'm super interested to see what the audience members think maybe we missed something and i can't wait to see you guys on the next week's show for now guys please take it easy and please stay safe and we'll see you on the next episode peace out guys Thank you.